probably the thing we've disagreed on most since we've been doing um, our renovations and restorations. <laughs> Amy has been making a lot of progress with her tiles, so I'd better get on with the paneling before she's finished. The only slight issue is that we still have a disagreement on the design, and I hope we can get over that and find a solution. As you remember, Mark did this amazing wood panelling in the main bedroom that we're going to move into. And we've been discussing whether or not and, uh, to continue it into the bathroom. And if we do, whether we keep the same style or the same height. And we have wildly different opinions on what we should do. Um, it's probably the thing we've disagreed on most since we've been doing um, our renovations and restorations. <laughs> I think we need her to be the um, deciding vote. She agrees with me. <laughs> the big de decision is about Mark would like to panel the entire room in wood panelling, which we then paint. Um, I think that feels a little oppressive. Um, the problem is if we do it part the way up is how we move it past the fittings. Um, my fairly strong view and I don't often have very strong views about interior decorating I have to say he normally wins over on this is that it should be um, the same height as out there and that it would continue along here in fact I'm gonna draw it for you I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch you and Poppet need to give me your opinion better be convincing I'm going to do you a design on the wall to show you what I think we should do and see if I can convince both of you. She's looking sceptical, but... Yeah, yeah she is. <laughs> so, give or take a few centimetres, depending on how wide the skirting is, we're talking about 121-ish on the wall here. So that would be a nice wall with a wide-ish um, plank at the top. And you could put some pegs in it or anything in different places. Then you get it in waves like this. <laughs> and again over here behind the bath. Now that would take it on this side above, well, we might have to make it a tiny bit higher. If we make sure that the plank at the top comes just above the plate that's on there, I think that'll look okay. So we'll need to do a skirting board bait to bring it to that height based on the plate. Then here, <laughs> stop looking skeptical. <laughs> the idea would be, um, maybe it's gonna be a bit higher. Just halfway through the plank. <laughs> Hold on, 121-ish. Yeah. All right, so we'll bear that in mind as well. So let's say 100, it's gonna to have to be 126. So you're gonna to have to find some sick, thick skirting board. My idea here is that I will then do a little feature splashback of tiles. And I can even cut it to the right I can even do one to the right size at the bottom, I'll, I'll see. I can, it'd be quite cool to do them in that shape. Um, what do you think of my overall plan? I think it sounds quite complicated. Uh, do we really need tiles here? Yes, we do. I've spent a very, very long time learning how to make handmade tiles and if we don't use them, it was all for nothing. No, you can put those elsewhere. 
I think it would bring a beautiful splash of colour there. Uh, okay, so I think I need to do some measurements. <laughs> and uh, let's see if it works. Okay. I'll leave you to With it. With enthusiasm. <laughs> With enthusiasm. <laughs> This is the first uh, serious interior design dispute we've had, actually. Um, and it's a bit difficult for Mark because he's kind of agreed to my suggestion, but having to work on something that you don't really like the idea of um, is probably not very enjoyable. So I think I'm gonna have to keep him sweet with plenty of uh, tea and coffee and cake. The first thing I need to do is cut some uh, length of uh, skirting boards to do the um, to insert the panels. So I'm going to route the edge uh, so that uh, we can uh, slot it in. This is a template for the panels, and so it will come it will come and behind the skirting board like this. So that looks about, uh, about right. I think my tape's at the end of its life. So before I cut the skirting board, I want to make sure it's, uh, it will be flush against the wood. And for that, I'm just going to draw the shape on the template and, um, and cut one end like that. I just tape a little piece of wood to my, uh, my pencil so I can follow the contour of the wall. This is my template. That's actually not too bad. So that will be the shape of the edge of my skirting board. At this end, I need to do a 45 degree cut because it will be in the corner of the, of the room. And I hope it fits. Yep, just right. And now one last bit, I need to drill a hole for the um, for the outlet of the for the drain of the bath. Hopefully, I didn't make a mistake. Looks good to me. Not too bad. So um, now I need to screw it onto the plaster board and start paneling. I'm now nearly done with this wall. Uh, I just have two more panels to do, but I have the more, uh, the most tricky one to cut because the um, I need to profile it against the stones of the wall. So this uh, always takes a bit longer. So for, uh, for this profile, I'm going to cheat a little bit 
and use um, use my profiling uh, ruler to do it <laughs> so I get uh, a more accurate uh, a more accurate uh, profile so that's uh, that's actually quite handy down a bit <laughs> so need to make a few adjustments I had to hit the, the board, but uh, it's close enough to the wall and uh, it will be behind the path, so it shouldn't show too much. Okay, that's not too bad. I'll uh, probably just need to put a bit of wood filler before painting it and that should uh, should look quite nice. When we designed the, this bathroom, we decided to put a low spotlight on the floor so that uh, when guests want to use the bathroom at night, they don't have to have a full light in their face. Uh, but I think the electrician missed the point a little bit and so the cable is uh, comes out at the wrong place so I need to relocate it um, and just uh, put it a bit higher than it is. As the bathroom is quite narrow, we had to put a recessed toilet and the, the cistern is inside the wall. But the, um, we have the, the place for it, but I need to keep an access through the um, wood panel uh, so that uh, we can uh, fix it if we need to. And so I need to cut a piece of uh, the plasterboard off and I'll, I'll make a door, uh, um, a magnetic door behind the, the panel. I'm going to do it like this. So that's a bit annoying because the my uh, ruler is a bit too long for this wall. I do the same on the other uh, the other corners.
is it. So now I'm going to finish with the knife. These walls aren't actually um, plasterboards. It's uh, something a lot, a lot uh, more tough called Fermacel. It's a special fiber. And so it's not as easy to work on as plasterboards. It's a lot, lot stronger. Here it is. So that's perfect. Have access to the the inside of the loo, the flush. And I didn't wreck anything, which is really good. So now the plan is to put a magnetic uh, door. And this will be screwed to the back of the wood panels. Well done, my Cherie. It's looking beautiful. Thank you. I particularly love your wavy lines along the walls. It's because the walls are <laughs> wavy already. I've realized that I need to cut the skirting board around the loo. Yeah. Because otherwise it will be a bit too protruding. Yeah. And my idea here was to do a big uh, trap mm -hmm. above the loo. Yep. And all the all the way up. Yeah. Sounds good. What do you think? Gosh, it's complicated for you, this, isn't it? Yes. I'm not making my life simple. <laughs> I think what you're doing is absolutely wonderful, and you should just carry on being wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This bit is a little bit fiddly because I have to, um, to try and make a custom uh, trap and uh, make it as invisible as possible because it's not meant to be open every day. So the trap's in place. Now uh, I'm going to, the panels will, will come above it like this. Oops. And my idea is to screw them uh, to the back of this so that they hold uh, all together. And it means the, we'll be able to remove the whole thing in one piece if we need to access the, the flush. The issue I have now is that my plank is a bit twisted and so I want to keep it as flat as possible so it doesn't look too bad. So it's not working because the screws are a bit too thick so the, the planks protrude out of the wall so I need to try something else. Oh, I do like it. Oh, I really like it. 
Oh, really well done, my Cherie. So we just need to put the top uh, board. Yeah. So I stopped at the sink as you, as yeah, you said so for your can, tiles. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I need to sort the, the loo flush. Yeah. Um, but I had a bit of an issue because uh, I broke the button uh, when I tried to <laughs> disassemble it. Gosh, it looks really, really good. And then I just have a few finishing touches to do with the, yeah, filling the little gaps and things like that. Well done, Michelle. Yes. That's really, really, really good. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, no, she wants your microphone. Yeah. She wants that. Um, it gives texture to the room, which is what we were looking for, wasn't it? It makes it feel older already. It's really, really great, and um, I really feel like it's going to add such good texture to the room and make it feel older. Um, we've just got to find the yeah, right colour for it. We want a new bathroom. We want a new bathroom, not an old one. Um, we've got to... Next stage is to... Uh, find the colours for the paint as well, for the wall and the wood, yep. and then sort the bath out. Yep. It's looking real. Well done, my Cherie. Well done, my baby girl. 